to more sciencey. Um, this is Thomas Fourth, and he's going to intrigue us all at seeing inside the lab. I hope you intrigue you all. I'm sure you will. Oh, <laughs> I'll try my best anyway. So uh, I'll start with a nice picture, which I hope everyone can see. Uh, and this is a picture that I took with my mobile phone one day. I was counting one of the innumerable slides and I saw this beautiful picture, I think. So I'll just quickly explain what it is. It's three malaria parasites. Obviously there's three things that look a bit different in the middle. And they form these really nice ring shapes. They're probably the most beautiful rings you'll find in biology. They look lovely, don't they? And it's inside a red blood cell. So that's grown in the lab, two minute walk away, inside a human red blood cell. And just before I get right into it, uh, if you're interested in seeing any more of this, there's some other talks, the work that I've done, at my website there, tomhawk.co.uk, it's quite short. So, the first thing I'm going to talk about in terms of malaria is some jelly snake sweets. That's my plan. And the reason I'm going to talk about that is because they are made primarily of glucose, which we know is a sugar. We've seen Lucas Aid adverts, and that's where I want to start. Because I should say this is taken with the best microscope that we have, the best light microscope that we have. So, we're not going to see inside it with our eyes. Oh, it's right over there, small. This is a map of metabolism. And we all actually know this part of metabolism. Right at the top there's glucose, like in these sweets. And right at the bottom there's lactate. And if I were to eat these sweets, run up and down those stairs very quickly, so quickly that I was out of breath, the glucose that was in these sweets would become lactate in my muscles and they would hurt. And that's what lactate is. Some people call it lactic acid. It's the same thing. And this is a very basic idea in metabolism. It's very simple. Almost all organisms can do this. They can burn glucose to create lactate and get some energy for themselves. Now, this reaction here, you can see each little bit is one reaction. It takes quite a lot of reactions to get there. It's part of something bigger. Now, don't be scared, there's a lot of stuff on there, don't worry about it. It's a map. But what I'm trying to show here is that this reaction, glucose to lactate, which goes on in our bodies all the time, is part of a bigger picture. In fact, there's lots of different ways that we can take different sugars up at the top, up at the left, and bring them down and create lactate. So if I ate a banana, it wouldn't have glucose in, it would have fructose in. But it would have to still come down the same way to create lactate and give us energy. So one of the novel things that I've done in my PhD so far is to say, there's got to be two ways of looking at this. This shows you the reactions that go on from glucose to lactate. This shows you all the possible reactions. I want to see all the possible reactions and which ones are going on. And that's a way of doing it. So I'm overlaying the two things. I'm saying, here are all the reactions that could take place with, in a thicker line, the ones that do take place. So if I ate the sweet, that reaction would happen. If I ate the banana, different reactions would happen, and I could show them differently. So how am I going to get to seeing inside malaria? This is how you use glucose to make energy. But malaria has to make everything. It's an organism just like us. It has to make proteins, it has to make fat. It has to recreate itself. And so we get the map like this for malaria, which I've spent two and a half years making, which looks like that. Now, again, don't worry about it. It takes two and a half years to make it because it is quite complicated. And in fact, this is only a quarter of it. But it's the quarter that's looks nicest. I'm just going to show you where that bit that we saw before was. That's there. So we all know what that bit is now. That takes glucose, makes it into lactate, gives, gives it energy. But now I want to show you what's actually active in malaria. This is okay. This is what it could do. But I want to know what happens when malaria eats. And what it eats is you, if you're infected with it. So it eats human red blood cells. 
And what it produces is more malaria. So I want to say, instead of saying, I take in glucose, I make lactate, what's active on my pathway? I want to say, it eats red blood cells, it produces more malaria, what's active on the pathway? A bit of computation here. If you want to know what the computation is, you can look up the flux balance analysis site on Wikipedia. It's good fun, there'll be a link at the end. Since I wrote it, it's pretty good. <laughs> I wouldn't quote it literally. So there you go. You see that some bits don't get used. This circle is a really nice circle. This circle is the best bit of metabolism. We have it, and malaria doesn't. How good is that? This is the bit that means if you've got oxygen, if you're not out of breath, you don't produce lactate and your muscles don't get sore. Your muscles aren't sore now, but you're burning glucose. That's because it sends it round your circle and gets rid of it. Malaria doesn't have it. It doesn't have some stuff over here that's quite interesting. It doesn't have stuff over here. But some bits, these bits here, really, really important. Loads of stuff goes through there. If you design a drug to kill malaria, now I want to ruin this. I want to take out a few pieces of this. I want to blow them up with a drug such as quinine, such as artemisinin. These are two drugs that cure malaria. I want to target right here. I want to get the bit where everything's going through. I suppose that's one reason why I may be doing my work. So now I want to say, we've, we've looked at this map. It's a nice picture. There's some uh, details. of have some pictures. So I actually grow this malaria. We get blood from the LGI, we have some malaria, we grow it in these little flasks at the top left. We spend a few years growing it. It can grow quite quickly, but we grow it, you know, it doubles every day. So if you have malaria within five days, you're really struggling. But it's in a test tube, so it's okay. We then isolate the malaria parasites. That's in this step in the middle. You get this little black dot from all those litres of blood. We spin it down, we get it, and we have a nice picture. It's always nice, a blue glove, some black dots. Great. So that was two years' work there, those six little black dots. But when I said that I have to know what the malaria parasite produces, like the lactate in my first model, I need to know what malaria is. So I measured that, and I want to get onto a smaller, real, example that we can maybe understand of something really interesting. So, this left bit we've seen before, glucose to lactate, yeah? There's this extra circle that I told you doesn't do much in malaria. There's this bit at the top right, that's an extra bit, it's called the pentose phosphate cycle. Uh, I will not worry about it. Okay, we measured how much glucose the malaria parasite took in. We measured how much lactate it produced. And we thought, well, we'll see from the amount that we measured glucose coming in and lactate being produced, where it was active. So there you go, that's what's active in that area. Then we measured something a bit strange. We uh, measured that there was alcohol being produced. And we thought, this is strange. I mean, there wasn't any alcohol when we started growing in malaria. Malaria doesn't produce alcohol. Well, that's what every book said. So we added a few things. We thought we'd measured alcohol. Let's produce a way to do it. So I added this little diamond shape here. That's all. A diamond shape, one reaction, two reaction, three reactions. And I ran all the simulations again. I know how much glucose it took in. I know which, how much lactate it produced. And now I said it's got to produce some ethanol. I've added three reactions to let it do it. Look how completely everything changes. Between those two pictures, you've got a massive change in how this parasite lives. So the question is, is this answer that's in your book that says this circle doesn't work, is that right? Or is what we've predicted on a computer using measurements of the fact that malaria produces ethanol by it? The answer is we don't know. If this is the case, if malaria can use this cycle that we use, then we're going to have more trouble than we thought trying to kill it. 
because it can adapt in the same ways that we can adapt. So a drug that kills it is more likely to kill us. So that's one result that we had. That's one that's very interesting. And I've shown you this example, but on the whole network, there are lots and lots of other examples that we can use. We can take results from experiments and we can apply them and see how the model changes. And the key, I guess, is, as I showed before, if we want to create a drug that will kill malaria, we want to be going for these big lines rather than something small on the side. So that's part of the reason. Ah, my number, my special number at the end of the talk. So 42. One of the reasons that we study malaria, because malaria actually is quite difficult to grow. Um, it's quite a cool organism. It's like... It's, it's nice, the pictures were nice. I really like the rings. It's always nice to see them in your, your samples. And the real reason, though, that we study this instead of the hundreds of thousands of other really interesting organisms is because that's how many people malaria killed during this talk so far. So it's quite a lot. It's about one and a half million people per year, almost exclusively pregnant women and young children. Uh, in fact, I put in the abstract some pretty outrageous claims, if anyone read it. But I think it is true that malaria nearly wiped out humanity a few hundred thousand years ago. It certainly has contributed to a lot of historical facts. A lot of history is based on malaria. We used to have it here in the UK where I said it's involved in the history of Scotland, the Romans didn't invade Scotland because they couldn't drain enough of the swamp to stop malaria being transmitted. Amongst some other reasons. So the real question is, why are we working on it? Well, we're working on it because it kills people. Am I going to make any headway in stopping that happening? No. We do test some drugs. Big pharma companies test more drugs than we do. Real reason is because it's so interesting. We've never really found a cure that works properly. The Mayans gave us quinine, which is about 3,000 years old. We still use it. It doesn't work very well. Uh, Chinese historical medicine gave us our only foreign drug that works. Western science has not created new drugs against malaria for hundreds of years of trying. So, Hopefully, you can see some of the interest in what we do. All of the models uh, I've drawn myself. There's some software here that will let you draw your models if you like. If you fancy drawing some beautiful models of metabolism and analyze them and show those thick lines, they're happy to download it. It's very nice, metnetmaker.com. And I'd just like to thank uh, my two supervisors, Professor David Westhead in bioinformatics, so that's the computational side, the uh, maps and the drawings, and Dr. Glenn McConkey, who I grow malaria with. I'd like to thank the White Rose DC for paying me, and also I have to acknowledge these three master's students who've just been really great over the last three years. Every year, a master's student comes into the lab, wants to do a one-year project on malaria. I say, that's great. I'm going to help you loads, and then I get them to do my work. So they've really done almost everything there. Uh, and thank you all for listening.